Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Campion Church Candlelight Christmas program. I'm Rod Ortiz, I'm the lead pastor here, and I'm just really excited to have you here at a time like this. So glad we could just come together and worship during the Christmas season on Christmas Eve right here, right now. So just welcome, glad you're here. I'm going to have a word of prayer in just a moment, but after that, just want to let you know that the program will continue as printed and unannounced immediately afterwards. So with that, let's just open up with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads, Father in heaven. Thank you for this opportunity to worship, for this opportunity to gather in this holy moment on Christmas Eve as we celebrate the birth of Jesus. We're grateful for music and song and praise. So thank you for continuing to just fill this space with your spirit and your presence. Touch every heart. We do pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Trust the Father. 
And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be the sign to you. You shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told them. Great job, Olivia. So to this day, this still stands as my most favorite Christmas of all time. I was five years old. We were living in Berrien Springs, Michigan, where my dad was actually studying in the theological seminary there. He was pastor in Puerto Rico. The whole family moved there to Michigan. There was four of us siblings. And I had no self-awareness about this at the time. But looking back on it and understanding what student life can be like, I now understand that we were poor. Things were hard. In fact, when I went to seminary many years later, we housed ourselves in one of those same student apartments there in Barron Springs. But nonetheless, because I had no self-awareness about our economic condition at the time, I, as most children would do, I asked for what I actually wanted. And I remember seeing the commercials on TV and, oh, there was nothing I wanted more than this particular truck. And if there's any other 80s kids around, you just might remember, in fact, just right before coming here this afternoon, I said, you know, I wonder if on YouTube I can find the commercial that I actually remember seeing. It was called The Animal. Just wait. It was a truck, kind of a monster truck, three different colors. I think there was just an on button and an off button. It would just go forward, maybe backwards. But when it would bump into any kind of obstacle, these kind of claws would come out of its wheels. Oh, it was the coolest. And oh, how I longed for that particular gift, and I asked for it. And there we were. I still remember it like it was yesterday. 
in that tiny little apartment in student housing at Andrews University, I opened up the gift and there it was. I instantly opened everything up and they had batteries, we put it in, I, I tested it out and I remember one of my brothers got a train set and I remember looking out the window and it was snowing and I remember the specific thought as a five-year-old of thinking everything is perfect. Thinking, wow, this, this moment right now is amazing. You know, the truth is that the gift often reveals the heart of the giver, does it not? In other words, I can tell my wife I love you and I might send her a picture that is special to me or I might send a picture of someone that is special to me, a friend, and they would appreciate it, no doubt. But if I prepare a scrapbook for the same person and I take my time and I design it just so and I arrange it and write special thoughts in it, it reveals a little bit more, doesn't it? Because there's just something about the kind of gift that you receive that does in fact reveal the heart of the giver. It's seemingly a universal rule. You know, the Bible says that God gave us a gift during this season, in fact. Let me share with you a scripture from Isaiah chapter 9. Not even the complete verse. Verse 6. The Bible says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Now, at first glance, if someone is reading that particular verse in the Bible, it's not immediately clear what kind of gift or what is actually being spoken about. But of course, as if you continue in that verse and in that chapter, you realize that this is no ordinary child and that this is no ordinary gift. In fact, it begins to ascribe all kinds of powerful titles to this particular child. It says the government will be upon his shoulders and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Now, I want you to notice, and again, I believe this is a true principle, and I believe you have found it to be true in your own life, that a <laughs> gift does, in fact, reveal the heart of a giver, and if that is true, and I believe it to be so, just note what this reveals about God. <coughs> it says, unto us a child is born... Now, it's important to know, and if you were here with us for our church service yesterday, we spent a few minutes talking about this, but the reality is that God left heaven and became human. It he was not transported as an adult. He was God, is God, that took human form. It says, for unto us a child is born. But here's the interesting thing. I would think to myself that if I were going to agree to that deal, if I was Jesus in heaven and God the Father, we say, look, we're, we have to figure out a way to deal with this problem of sin, anticipating the possibility of the occurrence, if I were Jesus, I would have said this. I would have said, 
God the Father, okay, I, I will take on flesh and I will come as a baby and I will live life as a human. But when this whole thing is done, I want to be fully restored just as I was. I mean, it seems fair. You go through that stage, you experience it, you are one with humans for a spell, and then you return to that pre-incarnate form of Jesus. But I want you to notice that the record of Scripture does not indicate that. In fact, it indicates the opposite of that. Not only was Jesus born, it says, unto us a son is given. He is human forever. Let me say that again. Jesus, and this is the mystery of the incarnation, of course, Jesus being God took human form and today retains somehow it, it my mind cannot fully comprehend it Jesus retains human form I remind you after the resurrection Jesus retained his scars and he told Thomas he says see that it's me put your hands here and put your hands here. So it wasn't just a gift that was given once. It wasn't just a gift that was given temporarily. Jesus is a gift for us forever. You see, a gift reveals the heart of the giver, which is why during this time we thank God and we celebrate that God sent his son as a gift lying in a manger as a babe. So we are right to do this today as we sing, as we worship, and as we lift him up. Amen.
Let's sing. <laughs> Hymn number 135, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Let's stand up and sing. It just gets that blood moving, you know. The King of 
I'm struggling with a little bit of a cold, so if something doesn't come out, you know why. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, come, all you unfaithful, come, we can unstable, come, no, you are not alone. Oh, come, barren and waiting ones, weary of praying, come, see what you Christ is born, Christ is born for you, Christ is born, Christ is born. 
highlights of this program is for us to all sing the most iconic Christmas carol of all time, Silent Night by Candlelight. And so I invite the ones that are sitting on the, on the aisles to look under your pew there. Now, now, every aisle does not have it, but if you have a foil tray, pull it out and pass the uh, unlit candles down as far as they will go. Rob's going to come down the center aisle there and start lighting candles, and you'll, you'll light the one next to you. And I, let me remind you that the lit candle is always the one that remains upright. Don't tip the lit candle. I'll let you figure that out, the reasons for that. So go ahead and get those going. Um, and when all the candles are lit and things have kind of quieted down a bit, I'll have our final prayer. And then George will lead us in singing the Silent Night a cappella. And then when the last notes have faded away, the prayer will have already been offered. When the last notes have faded away, then we will leave the sanctuary in silence.
uh, blow your candle out and uh, leave it. The ones that have retrieved the trays, if you'll just put it on the end of your pew there, and we'll blow our candles out and set them back in the foil trays. Let's leave the sanctuary in silence, go to the right, and then another right, go to the community center, and there we will have a lot of refreshments there, a lot of homemade goodies there that we can spend some time there. So let's get our candles lit, and then we'll sing our, uh, the, the house lights will go down, and we'll sing Silent Night a cappella. given to all humanity, uh, the gift of a savior, the gift of a redeemer. 
Tonight, we first of all want to accept that gift that you've offered us. We invite you to come into our hearts. And Lord, then we want to express great gratitude, thanksgiving to you for your willingness to come to this earth and uh, give your life for ours so that we can enjoy eternity with you. We accept you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.